Welcome back. If you have not done Module 5, Lesson 1, and its cover letter evaluation tasks yet, please stop and do those first before continuing. Even with all the guidelines and strategies available, writing an effective cover letter is sometimes easier said than done. Here are five common cover letter pitfalls to avoid. Number one, your cover letter does not sufficiently address the job qualifications, especially the minimum qualifications, or MQs. As a reminder, the MQs are the must-have qualifications needed to be able to do the job. The desirable qualifications, or DQs, are the nice-to-have qualifications that, though not required, will definitely enhance your candidate profile and appeal to the employer. To put this in perspective, let's talk a bit about the application review process. When evaluating applicants for a position, review committees often use a rubric, which lists all the minimum and desirable qualifications for the position, such as the example here for a graduate assistantship position for a journal. Review committee members look over each applicant's cover letter and CV for evidence whether the candidate meets a particular qualification, and often to what degree. This is especially crucial for the minimum qualifications. If you don't demonstrate that you meet all the MQs, you may be automatically turned down for an interview and be ineligible for hiring. The tragic part is when you actually have those qualifications but fail to include evidence or discussion of them in your submitted documents. That could lead the committee to assume that you don't meet a particular qualification, marking it as a no, or are left unsure. When I've served on application review committees, I can't tell you how many times I've ended up marking no or putting in question marks just because qualifications weren't addressed. If your cover letter and CV do a good job, the review committee should easily and clearly be able to see that you have the applicable qualifications as with applicant number one. If not, they are left with cases like applicants two and three, where they're not entirely sure if they should or can interview the applicant or not. This does not make for a favorable impression. Okay, so why do people leave things out? There can be any number of reasons. Sometimes there are so many qualifications for a particular job that you overlook or forget to address something. A good way to prevent this is to go through the list of qualifications one by one and make sure the evidence can be found in your cover letter and or CV. In other words, do exactly what the review committee will be doing with their rubric and make sure nothing important is left out. The easier they can check things off on their rubric, the easier they can see you as a good potential candidate. Sometimes people don't address a qualification because they figure it's obvious. For example, for MQ number three in the rubric on the previous slide, they may think, well, everyone knows how to use Microsoft Word and Excel. I don't have to include that in. But remember, the review committee doesn't know you or what your abilities are. That is what your cover letter and CV are for, to let them know. Make sure you're not shortchanging yourself and list even obvious things to make sure you are completely addressing the qualifications. Other times, applicants will just state they have a qualification, but not give evidence for it. For example, for MQ number two, they may simply say, I have excellent communication and organizational skills, or I'm a very organized person, without elaborating or giving examples of those skills in action. Don't just say you have a particular skill. Give specific details and show it. And of course, there's the case where nothing is listed for a particular qualification because you don't actually have the particular skill or experience. If it's for a desirable qualification, that's not a deal breaker since DQs are the nice to have but not required qualifications. But if you do not have all the minimum qualifications, those must have skills, you may want to reconsider if you should really be applying for this particular job your time may be better spent applying for a job you are more qualified for. Number two, submitting a generic or form cover letter. 
If you are applying for several different jobs at the same time, you might be tempted to write a single generic cover letter detailing all your various qualifications in a general manner and sending it out with all applications. Do not do this. Employers can tell right away, especially as they discover that a lot of the text in your letter is not related to the specific qualifications they are asking for in their rubric. Sending a generic cover letter can give the following bad impressions and make them want to put your application aside. This person sounds like she is applying for a different position, not ours. Was this a mistake? This person does not understand what our job and its duties are all about. Did he do his homework about the position? These applicants could not be bothered to write a letter specific to the job. They must not be serious about applying. If you do not want this to happen, take the time to tailor your cover letter to the specific MQs and DQs for the position. If this is for your dream job, put the effort in to show you are a great match. Number three, focusing too much on what the institution or employer could do for you. You may be totally excited to see that a position has opened up at an institution you are just dying to get into. It has you daydreaming about working with professors you have admired for years that could help you take your research to new heights, how the high caliber status of the university could really propel your academic career. While it is perfectly fine to acknowledge and share your personal admiration in a professional manner, do not make it a focus of your cover letter or a reason why they should hire you. Remember that the employer advertises this position because they need help or have particular goals they need to meet. It isn't about them suddenly meeting your career or financial needs. It's about you meeting their job-related needs. Spend the time showing how you would be the right person for that job and what your background and skills could help them achieve, and the rest will follow. Number four, not making connections to the job you are applying for. Some people use the cover letter space to just reiterate the highlights of their education, their research, their work experience, and their skills in general, almost like a narrative version of their CV. But you don't need two documents to do the exact same thing, and you run the risk of creating a detailed but still generic cover letter. Instead, Tailor your cover letter to highlight what specific items in your CV are particularly relevant to the job qualifications and draw connections that the review committee may not see or miss. For example, when I applied for my program coordinator position at the NFLRC, I only had some administrative experience as a peer advisor for students pursuing teaching credentials and as a production manager for a stage performance. On the surface, these jobs may seem unrelated to what I would be doing for the NFLRC, but the duties and organizational and communication skill sets needed were actually similar. So I made those connections in my cover letter. As we often say in tips, the CV is your past. The cover letter is your future, hopefully with the employer. Your task in your cover letter is to cull the most important items from the many things listed in your CV and show how those are applicable and could well serve your future in the position you are applying for. Make those connections. They give employers a better idea of who you are and what you could bring to the job, helping them visualize you in the position. Number five not proofreading your cover letter. Yes, this may seem obvious, but it's surprising how many people don't proofread their cover letters well before sending them in. For example, I've had cases where applicants list the wrong department or center, not ours. Remember, a cover letter is the employer's first impression of you. Proofreading is especially crucial if the job you're applying for has any of these types of qualifications listed. Excellent written communication attention to detail, copy editing experience. If say you are applying for the journal graduate assistant position in our rubric earlier in this video, where copy editing is a key duty, 
and your cover letter has a number of spelling or grammatical mistakes, it will not inspire confidence in the employer of your abilities for that particular job. Even though you may describe your many years of copy editing experience, your own cover letter is showing counter evidence to that fact. Remember, your cover letter will always serve as evidence of your writing abilities. To make sure your cover letter is error free, it is a good practice to have a friend or colleague proofread your cover letter to catch anything you may have missed. They may also point out areas that are unclear or problematic in your wording so you can fix them before submitting your application. So when you're writing your cover letters, please keep these five cover letter pitfalls in mind and avoid them. So again, what do effective cover letters do? They make a good first impression. They give employers a better idea of who you are and what you could bring to the job, helping them visualize you in the position. They fully explain how you meet the job qualifications and demonstrate that you are a good candidate. They can help employers see connections between your experience and the job requirements and duties that might not be obvious. They demonstrate how well you can communicate or write. They interest an employer in you and make them want to look at your CV even more closely, not just skim it. And finally, they help get you an interview. Next up, test what you've learned in the Think section. Check out the Dig Deeper resources for even more strategies and tips. Do a follow-up cover letter task in the Discuss section. Select one of the three sample cover letters from the Discuss task in Module 5, Lesson 1, and answer the following question. If you were the author, what would you change to improve it? Describe at least three items and your reasons for making these changes. Keep in mind what you have learned in Lessons 1 and 2. Thanks for listening.